Welcome to our video. This is going to be a quick overview of how to select the appropriate docking station or cradle to mount your computing device in your vehicle. Let's jump in and get started. So there's some terminology we should cover first. One is docking station and the docking station in our lingo is a device that securely holds your computer and also has some electronics in it so it talks to the computer. We'll get into more detail on that in a minute. There's a couple of different versions of docking station. They are specific to the computer but even within that there is a couple of different versions. We'll touch on that in detail in a couple minutes. The cradle physically holds the computer but it doesn't have any electronics in it. So it doesn't talk to the computer at all or provide any power or port replication to the computer. So there are a couple different types of cradles. There's computer specific cradles and there are universal cradles. So let me talk about some advantages and disadvantages to each. So the docking station is a great system to be able to just put your computer in, latch it, it'll lock your computer in there uh, it will start charging your computer's battery and it will uh, replicate any ports. So for example, if you have a USB thermal printer in your car and it's connected to the USB port on the bottom of the docking station, when you put your computer into the docking station, it will automatically connect your computer to that printer. So you're not having to plug in cables into your laptop every time you bring your laptop into the vehicle and unplug everything when you take it out, which is of course a lot of wear and tear on your connectors and a pain in the butt to uh, keep all those cables tidy. The uh, disadvantage of the docking station is price. Uh, they are significantly more expensive than a cradle. So a cradle, the upside is that it's a much lower price than the docking station. Uh, you can get cradles that are specific to uh, a type of computer. So for example, if you're trying to put a Panasonic Toughbook CF31 into a vehicle, you can use a CF31 cradle. So the advantage to a computer specific cradle is that you don't have to adjust it uh, to hold that computer. It just drops in and goes. But of course, because it's a cradle, there's no electronics. So it's kind of midway between a docking station and a universal cradle almost. Then we get into the universal cradles, which is what's shown here in the lower right. And they are adjustable to any, pretty much any computing device. So this is a docking station. You can tell that it is, one of the reasons is because it's got a connector here. In this case, it's the connector that goes to the Panasonic Toughbook CF33. And that connector mates with a connector on the bottom of the computer and it passes power from the docking station through to the computer to charge the computer's battery and it also passes port replication information from the computer to the docking station for things like printers and other devices like I mentioned. This is a computer specific cradle so this in this case the uh, cradle is specific to a, a Toughbook CF33 but you can see that it has no docking pins here. So it will not communicate to the computer at all and it won't charge it. So in this case, if you put your computer in, you'd have to manually plug in power cables and USB cables to the side of it. This is a universal cradle. So you can see that these side clips and the front and rear clips can be adjusted uh, on quite a wide range. And then as well, you can adjust it for width of computer. When it's installed, the computer ends up looking like this. So the first time you install, you put the computer in, you use your Allen key to adjust all these side clips to make sure that they hold down on the keyboard securely. Uh, but once it's adjusted for your computer, you don't need to do that every time. To remove your computer, you simply twist this latch, pull the docking station open, remove your computer, and then reverse that process to reinstall your computer. I would like to mention here that we use uh, metal docking stations and cradles, 
In this case, this is an all metal cradle. Those side uh, clips are uh, metal. Uh, this is really important because it's almost impossible these days to mount computers outside of an airbag zone in a vehicle. Vehicles used to have one or two airbags in them, but now some of them have 20. So we get requests from customers to make sure we mount it outside the airbag zone um, in a vehicle, uh, including a full-size pickup truck it is really impossible to mount any device outside an airbag zone unless it's way up on the dash or on the floor. So please, when you get a cradle, make sure you get a metal one. Don't get these spring-loaded plastic consumer grade ones because you really don't want to have your computer as a projectile uh, in a crash. This is a uh, docking station, uh, sorry, a cradle for uh, an iPad or a tablet. Now, <laughs> this one is also metal in most cases. Uh, the main structure is metal, the side clips are, are uh, not, but it because you can mount a tablet vertically and there's no keyboard attached, we can get it out of the airbag zone. It's just the laptops are really difficult to do so because they're larger. Uh, in this case, you would adjust the side clips here for they, they screw in and out for thickness, and then you can adjust them for width and adjust them adjust it for height, and this is what it ends up looking like. In this case, you can see the iPad is wearing a case, and it still fits in nicely. So uh, we do need to know the size of your computing device with the previous screen and this one uh, to make sure we get you the right size because universal is not universal. There are a few different sizes of universal. <laughs> cradles, so we would ask you to measure your computing device so we can get you the right one. Okay, so let's move over to docking stations again. So docking stations, again, you can see the pins here that mate with the computer. Uh, the difference between these two are the left one has no pins, no uh, RF pass-through. I'll explain that in a minute. And this one does have little brass pins there for RF pass-through. So what RF is, is radio frequency. And if you can just bear with me here, here a moment, is I'm gonna go through this in detail. So when you order your Toughbook or other rugged computer, you can get, the, you can order them with cellular modem and GPS modem in them uh, as an option. So if you do order that, the advantage of course, is that no matter where you are with your computer, uh, inside a vehicle, outside a vehicle, sitting on a, uh, on a picnic table in a park doing your email, you have internet access through the cellular network, um, assuming you have cellular coverage in the area. If you don't get that option, then you've got to go find Wi-Fi or hotspot your phone to your computer or something to get internet. So the vast majority of our customers, probably 90, 95% or more who get ruggedized computers, get the cellular and GPS modems built into the computer when they order it from Panasonic or whatever vendor you're buying it from. The downside of having the uh, modems in the computer, uh, specifically the antennas inside your computer, there are no external antennas on laptops uh, so anymore. So the antennas are actually just embedded in the plastic, just like your smartphone. There are antennas in there, but they're embedded in the plastic. So when you go to dock your computer in your vehicle, especially if it's a fire apparatus where it's got a lot of metal around it, you've got a metal roof over you and um, metal framing down the windows and everything, and then you park that vehicle inside a fire hall or inside a parking area, um, the cellular in particular, but also the GPS reception can be drastically uh, reduced if you're still using your antennas that are inside the laptop's plastic, the internal antennas. So what these little brass connectors do is they mate up with the uh, mating connectors on the bottom of your computer and instruct when the computer is docked in the docking station, they instruct the computer to not use its internal antennas, but instead use the, the external antennas. So where you can see this is on the next slide where there are two connectors. This is looking at the bottom of the docking station now. 
So those little brass connectors on the top route the GPS and cellular signal antennas, rather, I'm sorry, through to the bottom of the docking stations through those two silver connectors that then would go out to cables and then rooftop antennas that your installer would put in. So again, when you dock the computer, those little brass connectors tell the computer to stop using its internal antennas and instead route those antennas, the signal rather, through the brass connectors, out the silver connectors on the bottom, and then two rooftop antennas that you would install. So that means your internal cellular and GPS in your laptop are now using rooftop antennas for better coverage. So those uh, antenna connectors on the bottom, those silver ones, if you uh, need to know, are called TNC, Tango November Charlie. It's a fairly standard uh, radio type connector and cables are readily available with TNC connectors on them. One thing I will note is on almost all docking stations that have this what we call dual RF pass-through, dual radio frequency pass-through, so it's just passing it through the dock. There is an antenna switch, I apologize, this image shows it upside down, but it says ant for external antenna, and you can say whether you want the computer to reroute the antennas through the rooftop uh, antennas or not, and simply by switching the switch off or on. If you have antennas and cables connected to these silver TNC connectors, you will want that external antenna switch in the on position. We have seen numerous installations of these types of docks where the installer did a beautiful job putting the dock in, putting antennas on the roof, running cables down, hooking them up to those two TNC connectors, and they didn't put the switch to on, so the antennas were completely useless. If the switch is off, then the docking station will tell the computer to ignore the external antennas and will just use its internal antennas instead, and that's why you can have significant reception issues, especially in fire apparatus. Here is a picture of a computer dock with the antenna cables going from the connectors, which I apologize you can't see, through the loom and then up to the roof. And on the roof, in this case, we've got two separate antennas, one for GPS and one for cellular. This far antenna, I don't know what that's for, that's for something completely different on the vehicle, but all we need is a GPS antenna or a cellular antenna, and I'm sorry, and a cellular data antenna. Um, some customers request a two-in-one, which you can certainly do. A uh, two-in-one meaning you'll have one roof hole and you'll have uh, cellular and GPS in one antenna unit. We typically don't do that and the reason for it is because even though GPS almost never changes technology, GPS has been largely the same for many years, uh, every three to four years the cellular technology changes. If you use a two-in-one antenna and the cellular technology changes say from 4G to 5G, like it's going to um, over the next year or so here in Canada, uh, then you need to remove the two-in-one antenna. You have to unwire it all the way down to the laptop dock, run new wires in with the new antenna to take advantage of that 5G, the new frequencies. With these connectors, uh, these just spin on, this antenna just spins on. Um, screws on. So it's very, very easy just to simply unscrew that uh, antenna and screw on a new one and in 30 seconds you are finished. So that is why we use, typically in most applications, we use two antennas, one for GPS and one for cellular data, just simply for future upgrade path. If your vehicle is only going to last a few years, like many police cars, then it's not a real big issue, but fire apparatus can last 10 to 20 years. For the big ones, easily 20 years, the cellular technology is going to upgrade um, a number of times over that span. So you want to make sure that you are upgrade proof. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped you. If you would like more information or uh, pricing and quotes, etc., just want to talk about your application, please feel free to give us a call or drop us an email and we'll be happy to help. Please note that we service Canadian customers only. If you're viewing this from the US or another country, please go to our manufacturer's websites 
to get distributor information near you and in your region. But if you're in Canada, we would love to help you. Please don't hesitate to call us. Thanks for your time. Please stay subscribed to the channel so you can see more instructional videos like this in the future.